大康自然健康中心成立于一九八七年，率先将自然疗法、同类疗法同埋碗创水疗引进香港。我哋提供各项整全性治疗方式，排除体内毒素，增强自身免疫系统，一切尽在大康自然健康中心。电话二五七七三七九八，网址三个 w dot n a t u r a l h e a l i n g dot com dot h k。以下节目内容。纯属主持及嘉宾个人意见，与本台立场无关。好、呃、各位网上听众，你哋好、呃、我系袁大明，好高兴咧，今晚又能够同大家一齐探讨一啲近日发生嘅事情，或者正在困扰香港嘅问题。咁香港出路网上电台嘅节目嘅目的咧，系希望咧系为香港寻找一条出路，能够真真正正解决香港面对嘅问题。咁我哋唔係希望呢，係只係同大家一齐大肆批评下政府、某机构或者某人对某事处理得唔好，咁大家发泄一番就算。我哋希望呢，係能够深入啲讨论问题嘅根源，了解问题嘅来龙去脉，咁从而提出一啲具体性嘅解决方法，同埋建议我哋每个人可以做啲咩嘢，令到呢个问题呢係真正解决呢。咁即係简单嚟讲，如果你係诶、呃、当事人喺当时嘅选举之下，你会点样做？好啦。咁誒、呃、今晚呢，大家都可以睇到我哋嗰、那個誒、呃、會誒講嘅題目呢，係係誒關於外星接觸手記、人類嘅鋭變咁。咁誒誒，原來呢，我哋誒、呃、即係做咗節目咁耐嚇，我哋都其實都冇乜真真正正去即係去分析一下咁邊啲節目呢係最多人聽呢。咁。咁我哋今日呢，就誒、呃、有機會呢，同我哋嘅誒誒監製啦，咁就講到呢個問題。咁佢睇一睇個數據呢，竟然呢，原來。最多人收聽，誒、呃、或者誒、呃、即係 download 我哋嘅資料呢，係竟然呢係當我哋講及嗰、那個即係 UFO 嗰、那個嗰、那個時候嘅。咁大家都知道啦、啊、香港人對現時嘅經濟嘅問題呢好關注啦。咁但係呢，原來呢香港人對即係外星啊人啊或者不明來歷嘅嘅飛行物體呢，其實呢嗰、那個關注嘅程度呢係相當之高嘅。咁我哋今晚呢，好好好高興呢，就請到一位啊、呃、國際知名嘅外星專家咁。誒誒呢位係 Mary Rockwell 啦，咁佢澳洲誒誒喺幾日前嚟澳洲上嚟香港嘅，咁喺誒誒兩日誒琴日咧，咁佢我哋都喺個香港大學裏面咧，都有一個相即係相似嘅話題討論嘅。咁我哋呢位誒誒、呃呃、UFO 嘅專家咧，其實佢本身個嗰個背景咧係一位誒、呃、護士嚟嘅，咁亦都係一位助產士，咁即係好明顯啦，即係佢個佢個背景咧同佢。即係跟住落嚟咁多年嚟嘅啊個興趣啊，同埋研究嘅對象呢，好似都係唔係好關注咁樣，即係唔係好唔係好拉家咁樣樣嘅。咁、啊、我哋今晚呢，就因為始終個時間啦，我哋都即係好似以往咁樣啦，咁遇到外籍人士啦，咁我哋都係用英語講就算㗎啦。咁我相信呢，我哋聽眾大部分都可以聽得到嘅。咁啊，或者咁樣先啦。啊<咳> ，Welcome Mary for coming here and spend the time with us and sharing your experience in this area. Now we know that you, your your actual background, professional background was in nursing. You are a registered nurse, and you you used to work as a midwife. But then you kind of、uh, later on you 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 begin your work in the area of hypnosis. Now, how do you ever get involved in this、uh, in this area of investigation on the、uh, UFO and ET? What what happened? Um, well, thank you for the invite. Um, look, um, it started out that I went into counselling and worked in a medical practice for five years in England, and then continued when I went into、um, to, to migrated to Western Australia, and、mm-hmm. I began to work with counselling in grief and bereavement. And interestingly, in grief and bereavement, people have sometimes very strange experiences where they feel maybe the departed. Mother or father has come to visit them, and strange things happen. So people often think they're a bit crazy when those kinds of things happen as well. So you know, there's a bit of a paranormal thing that happens when you know someone's lost someone very close to them. They may even f- smell the perfume of mother, you know, their mum suddenly around in the room and feel they're very close. So I was already aware of maybe the non-physical world. I went into, you know, I continued counselling. And have been in counselling for the last twenty years. But about fourteen years ago, I met my first client when I went into private practice, who said to me he'd heard that I was very open-minded, and he said, "I need someone who's open-minded." He said because 
my experiences, he said, there's no support groups for this. There's no one who wants to listen. Everybody just thinks you're crazy. And then he began to tell me about his own experiences. And he said, I wake up in the morning. I have shaved areas on my leg. He said, you know, I have marks on my body. My partner has the same things happening. My, you know, the children have these things happening. So it wasn't just him. It was his whole family. And that became my journey because I wanted to understand what was going on for him because he was plainly not crazy. Mm -hmm. But he was certainly having experiences out of the norm. And so that began, began my journey into what I call the non-physical realm and the whole area of ufology and um, uh, what we call abduction experiences, but actually more than that. They are now, I believe, contact experiences, and there are many forms of that kind of contact. How long ago was this? About 14 years ago. and since Four zero? Yes, yeah, uh, 14 oh. years ago oh. I started. Um, since then, I've had about 1,500 cases of people from all around the world, so, uh, many of them from Australia, but also from as far away as Russia, Alaska, South America, as well as obviously America and the UK, Finland. Um, people contact me from all around the world, and many of them call themselves, you know, having contact or being what I would call the star kids. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Children. And yeah, lots mm -hmm. of parents with children that are coming out with the most amazing and incredible information, including talking about, you know, as one little five-year-old said to his mother, I don't mind going through the walls and they teach me more on the spaceships than I learn at school. And one day I'll introduce you to them. This is a five-year-old child talking about his experiences on a spacecraft. So f from this uh, 1,500 cases mm -hmm. of, of close uh, encounters, in encounter, and then you, you, you felt that you know, uh, their experience uh, could not be ex ex uh, explained otherwise, but, but seemed to have some kind of uh, contact with, uh, with another dimension of being. And that, that's, that has, that's your conclusion, right, o over the years? Over the years. I mean, I did actually, I was doing um, ca advanced counseling at the time, mm. and I actually <coughs> took this as a case study to the Counseling Institute because I wanted to understand, was this man crazy? Was he hallucinating? Was he schizophrenic? You know, you go through all the different kinds of conditions it may be. And I, I actually presented this case and under supervision and in the, um, the counseling um, group, I had uniting ministers, psychologists, social workers and what have you. And they looked at this case alongside what I'd presented from this gentleman that had come to see me. Not one of them said to me they thought the man was crazy. Mm -hmm. They all actually started to tell me about their own um, paranormal experiences. So what I'd done is actually give them permission to say, you know, I've experienced strange things too that I can't explain. You know, and you know, I don't feel like I'm crazy either. So what I'd done in, in a way is give them permission to start saying that they, you know, that there's a, another realm for them also. But what made me go into this even more deeply was they could give me no answers. Mm -hmm. They couldn't say to me, yes, this is obviously real. So I had to do my own exploring and I read books. One of them particularly important was by um, a Harvard professor of uh, psychiatry, Dr. John Mack, who wrote the book Abduction. And in it, he'd, he'd um, explored a hundred cases of abduction experience. He came purely in as a skeptic but by the end of exploring these cases, without question, he, re he said that he believed it was their reality. He ended up writing another book called Co um, Passport to the Cosmos, where he went into more detail about the, this reality. And Dr. John Mack actually um, tested all these people psychologically. He gave them a range of psychological tests to make sure that they were psychologically sound. And he found no psychopathology. In other words, they were perfectly sane. If maybe a more intuitive and more psychic than most, there was no question that they were sane individuals. And his conclusion was not only that the were they sane, the fact is that these individuals often are experiencing this with other members of the family because it's intergenerational. It goes through genetic lines. So if um, you've got one person having experience, it's quite likely siblings. It might also be parents grandparents or grandchildren. It literally goes through lines. So again, it takes it away from being a fantasy or a hallucination because the mere fact is that people are missing from their beds, can wake mm -hmm. up outside with all the doors locked. 
They can wake up with marks on their body they can't explain from bruises, rashes. Um, many of these fluoresce under black ultraviolet light. They may find that their clothes are rearranged or in, or in funny places or even wearing pajamas that are not theirs. All these things are giving this an absolute reality. And what I discovered by re reading Dr. Mack's book and other books by experiencers, that this was a genuine experience that is, it crosses all cultural boundaries. This means it doesn't matter what you believe in. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter what age you are or what profession you are. I've had lawyers, doctors, nurses, social workers, um, psychiatrists that come to me and say they can't even talk about this to their colleagues because if you're a psychiatrist and you're saying you're seeing aliens, you're not going to have much of a practice at the end of it. So this is one of the most amazingly kept secrets on this planet is people won't talk about it because if you're a lawyer, as one lawyer said to me, I'm earning $450 an hour. What would happen to my practice if I started to say that I'm seeing aliens? I wouldn't have a practice. So why do they keep it quiet? Or wouldn't you? But, but you said, you know, this, this kind of work has been uh, seriously studied by, uh, by academicians like even you know, schools like Harvard. So uh, it, it actually warranted some serious study by, by some professor. Now, um, how common is this experience? Is there any study that show how many people really, it, it, you know, in, in a community or in our society have actually witnessed or, or encountered this sort of experience? There was a Roper poll done in, I think, uh, 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 in the 90s. And from this Roper poll, they asked certain questions that mm -hmm. are very common to the abduction experience. And one in five actually admitted that they'd had these kinds of um, symptoms, if you like, of this um, abduction experience. That was one in five, and that was in the 90s. In Australia, about 18 months ago, there was a, another poll done, a similar kind of poll, over 750 individuals. 750. In a, 15, 15. Yeah, 750 mm -hmm. individuals in Australia, and they asked similar questions. And one in five said that they'd seen a UFO and some admitted they'd had interactions with them. We are talking about millions of people. But, you know, I mean, if, if you look at the figure you, uh, you mentioned, you know, according to the poll that's actually been carried out in mm. recently in Australia, mm. then one would think that, you know, uh, it is not a kind of uh, unusual experience people will be afraid to talk about. I mean, you know, if one in five people have that experience, mm. and they will find commonalities, you know, if you just kind of start talking about it. So, I mean, uh, we, we have a, you know, we do have a, a, a sizable audience today, and then, I mean, among us, you know, we have some people who actually have seen it. Uh, now, unfortunately, I haven't, you know, I haven't mm. really seen uh, any, anything uh, close mm. to the UFO or ET, and uh, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. uh, um, have you personally, I mean, have any kind of uh, encounter yourself or you just do it as a more like a academic study and uh, that's how they started and remain so or well initially i hadn't seen anything unusual in the mm -hmm. sky but in the last few years i've seen certainly um bright lights that didn't do what stars do which is stay still and have gone in strange directions and i've had um, my watch um with another gentleman when i was um, seeing these strange lights our watches were um, at least at least an hour apart, and we couldn't work out why because our watches were the same time when we went to watch these these strange lights. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually seen it clearly enough to set, to see what kind of shape it was. Mm -hmm. I've had no conscious experiences, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not relevant to me. Right. All I know is that I don't recall anything. Mm -hmm. But my interest came purely to start with on the mystery. I I saw a sane person in front of me talking about their experiences. I met his wife, I met the children, and I could see that they were quite normal. And, mm -hmm. But what they were experiencing was, a, as a whole family, quite abnormal. And since then, of course, um, many, many others have found me. And I've, I've had people fly from other, you know, from England to actually come to see me because they couldn't get the support in England that they were looking for. 12,000 miles to come and see someone who's actually going to listen to their experiences mm -hmm. and support them. New Zealand, from other parts of Australia, have flown a long way. Um, you know, one particular person flew from the other side of Australia. She was married to a psychiatrist and couldn't tell the psychiatrist, hmm. her husband, that she, you know, that she was having these experiences because she was afraid her husband wouldn't accept it. 
So, you know, what I'm getting at is that, you know, this is, is something for whatever reason, many, many people find they can't talk about it to their family and friends because the common reaction, whether, you know, you want to accept it as, uh, or not, is one of disbelief. Mm -hmm. And if it's not disbelief, often it's even, you know, derision. Oh, yes, you've seen a UFO. Ha, ha, ha. So you believe in aliens. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Now, right here in our studio, we, you know, we have about uh, 17 people, you know, out of this uh, 17 of us, I think at least uh, f uh, five people, four, four people at least, you know, have actual, five have actually witnessed this experience. And I would like to, you know, one of us to share, you know, uh, your experience. Can, can you uh, explain, you know, what, what you think you have uh, seen when you were young? Teresa,是的。其實呢,其實,即係你哋叫做Teresa,係。咁,係咯,咁我其實即係見UFO呢,就都大致上都見過十次以下啦,即係嚇。一路都係住喺香港嘅香港人。係啦。咁,咁其實
the light of this, this craft and the light of the sky almost match. So we have video, but all you can hear is everybody screaming and shouting, but you can see nothing. And, and, and the, 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 the huge craft came past uh, the Park Fulham Channel, past Bagheaven as, again as normal, and morphed into a different shape, into a ribbon, and then into a round donut shape, huge, and went off. It did it six times, not once, six times. After the display was over, we all went inside. My son, from, from the UK, he came over. He was so amazed because he did not believe me. He was the only mm -hmm. member of the family that was left out of the last sighting I told you about. Mm -hmm. And apparently he came running and his face was white. He said, I can't believe what I've just seen. The whole sky blacked out in the shape of a big boomerang from the north of Lama again to Tsimsa Choi. The whole sky backed out, and he, he totally um, freaked out. In fact, Mary had a chat with my kids uh, today, and they explained independently to Mary the, the, um, the whole story. But now, what we find is this, uh, Dr. Jung. Mm. We're finding that um, if we have a sky watch mm -hmm. for three hours, and we say the most suitable time is between 7.30 and 10.30, mm -hmm. if the sky is partly cloudy, it's okay. Even if it's slightly misty, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But remember, to sit and look in the sky for three hours is not easy. People don't do that. Mm -hmm. They look up, they look down, they talk. Mm -hmm. The talking stops. People can look up at the sky for three hours. I am so confident that you will see something. Because on every subsequent night, we had... Uh, one time we had one white ball of light come, split into three like the film Close Encounter, went off into different directions. Then we had two lights going at tremendous speed across the sky, and of course we have the normal uh, um, V-shaped craft. Mm -hmm. But it, it just takes sitting down and watching the sky. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, 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 your, your daughter did so that, yep, Teresa, yep. right? The three nights. Yeah. Right. That's when when, that, when did that? When was this? We talk about a month ago, a week ago here, or we're talking about two and a half weeks ago, and on, on uh, between about the ninth to about the thirteenth. Uh, it's my best recollection. I have all the data at home. Oh, oh. Um, this was going October. Of October, the ninth to the thirteenth of October. So I I told you last time we're now <coughs> getting to the point where we. As a group, you know, I, I consider myself um, very closely associated with the mm -hmm. Hong Kong Institute of Ufology and the UFO Club. Even though we're Exopolitics Hong Kong, we're all in the same exact same boat. That we need to embark on this galactic diplomacy and get together the right people to go out on our own and to begin to make contacts. So I just had an email tonight mm -hmm. that we've just had incredible news from Switzerland that more contact groups have got together and they've actually made contact again. So I'm, I'm very, very encouraged by what I've just heard there. Now, yeah. when, when something that side that you just described, you know, went over the skylines in Hong Kong, yes. I would think a, a lot of people would have noticed it. Well, funny enough, you know, um, about two or three weeks ago, the Apple Daily, Did they? The Apple Daily yeah. paper contacted us right, Moon, and, and sent me photos. And, and I kept saying to Moon, Moon, I can't see anything in the photos because, yeah, the rubber band I thought was a circle. Uh -huh. Somebody drawn a circle around the craft, and I was looking in the circle. What they were showing me was the circle. <laughs> the circle uh -huh. was the craft. <laughs> so that was on the newspaper. Well, the, the Apple from Daily, someone. The Apple Daily received yeah, they, they it asked us for, opinion. for opinion. So what? 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 what you know? Uh, what is in the picture? Opinion. Just uh -huh. it's like a rubber band. You see through it in the middle. It's through the sky. And then you have a rim. You have a rim of darkness. Looks like a huge rubber band in the sky. Kind of. But. But it doesn't look anywhere uh, like what you think, you know. You say, you well, why do you have to look at something the way you think? This is this is 99% of the problem. Right. We shouldn't think. Right. We okay. shouldn't, you know, preconceive what we think something will look like because it's like it's like you know people calling an ET an angel, mm. or they see a, a, a beautiful female in a bright light and they say that's the Virgin Mary because they think mm -hmm. they expect we shouldn't think like that. We have to open our mind to this cosmic conscious conditioning that uh, Dr. Mack was talking about. That's what it is. Now, so, so what, uh, what uh, is in the picture is just uh, like, like a circle, uh, looks like a rubber band. Yes, and it's but, big. Um, you sent it's me a another big. email, something happened similar in other... You sent yes. me an email, something happened similar in other countries, 
but you kind of imply that this is kind of like an artificial thing. No, what we do is we challenge everything that comes in. Right. We don't just accept everything. We try mm -hmm. to match up as much as we can. Mm -hmm. But the problem, I try to show that we could simulate it by using a blowing a smoke ring. Oh, okay. Okay, a huge smoke ring goes up. I let it come, yeah. Right, but the smoke ring will go up and it will form that shape and then it will dissipate. This particular picture showed this band in three different places. Uh -huh. So it maintained its integrity as, 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 as this like rubber band. It was in Brazil. Uh -huh. It was in different countries in too. Hong Kong. And uh, one more place, right? Yes, yes, yes. Did the paper sh uh, show that on, in their own papers? Paper? Papers, you know, just as what? Mary was telling you, mm. what reporter is going to be the first one to really, with his heart, say, yes, I believe it? And printed. No, mm -hmm. he doesn't mm -hmm. want his credibility wrecked. He mm -hmm. wants to continue earning his money as a reporter of terrestrial mm -hmm. things that everybody is is, mm -hmm. is confident of and everybody knows about. We're dealing in the world's greatest. Uh, you know, it, it's a, as Stanton Friedman said, it was it's a, a cosmic Watergate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big cover up. No, but you said you know uh, uh, a flying object spanning the, uh, from uh, Lemma Island to Chim Sa Zoi. That, that covers a good part of the sky, skyline. Why would not more people have seen it? Was it just a, a momentary flicking uh, image? or No, it was not. It oh. was more than six passes. Now, the question is this. Yes. If people saw it, who are they going to tell? Where is the central reporting office in Hong Kong? Who is going to listen? Who's going to believe them? Each person is on his own with this mm -hmm. kind of thing. And what we're trying to do is pull everybody in together. Let people know, mm. like Mary, what Mary's done for people, you cannot mm -hmm. imagine. They would have gone crazy. They probably would have been drugged if not for Mary. Mary has saved people. Right. She saved people from being medicated mm -hmm. and put away. And it, it's the same thing. People do not want to be, you know, it, it look stupid. Mm. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I never feel more comfortable than I'm with, with the people in this room. Because everybody here knows the truth. No. Okay, uh, let's let's take a, a, a short break, and uh, and for people you know who want to join our discussion, and uh, our phone in uh, number is uh, two two one three four one one three four. Uh, our phone in number is two one three four one one three four. So we'll be back, you know, in a, in a, a couple of minutes. 六创意健康店系一间最多元化选择嘅健康店，提供二千多种不同种类嘅健康食品同饮品、环保家居及个人用品、健康产品、营养补充剂、一系列健康书籍等等。六创意健康店电话二八八二四八四八，网址三个 W d o H E A L T H S H O P d o com d o H K。好啦，我哋今晚呢，诶，翻翻诶，继续我哋嘅诶，今晚嘅讲题啦，就係、是、外星接触手记，人类嘅锐变。咁我哋今晚嘅嘉宾呢，係远由澳洲嚟嘅诶 ，Mary Rockwell 啦。咁诶、呃，我哋头先都诶讲及啦，其实诶、呃，接触到或者诶、呃、见过诶、呃、UFO 啊，或者诶、呃、有外星人嘅接触嘅人，其实係比我哋想象中多嘅。我哋都成日都。誒、呃，即係以為唔係好多人知啦，咁所以有啲人遇到啦，都唔係係咁誒咁講嘅。咁但係你曾經睇到啦，喺澳洲最近嗰、那個誒嗰、呃那個調查啦，咁七百五十人裏面呢，竟然呢發現呢有五位有一一位呢係係有呢方面嘅經驗嘅。咁但係點解大家都唔係好敢講呢？咁咁始終呢，即係一般人嘅嘅感覺呢，即係一般人都唔會相信你啦、啊、你講呢樣嘢，人哋會覺得你係個怪人嘅。咁但係形勢而家開始改緊㗎啦。咁啊，各地嘅啊政府啦，咁似乎呢都好似開始呢，係將呢方面嘅啊過去搜集嘅資料呢，係慢慢地放返出嚟嘅。譬如二零零四年呢，墨西哥政府呢嗰個曾經啊講過佢哋嘅空軍以紅外線呢係追蹤過啊啊外星群嘅。咁到二零零七年呢，法國嘅太空總署呢亦都公布五十年裏面呢係差唔多成個萬次嘅 UFO 嗰啲記錄嘅。咁最近呢，就係、是、英國國防部呢，都個網站呢，亦都即係將以前話即係唔存在嘅機密嘅檔案呢，都公布出嚟嘅。咁開始聯合國呢，都開始對呢方面呢，係慢慢地咁啊，即係啊慢慢地咁啊泄露出嚟啦。咁甚至乎梵蒂岡都好呢，開始轉態嘅。So now we know the situation has changed, you know, because the government all over the world are 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 beginning to to review this sort of、uh, information document they have. They have kept、mm. the secret for for a long time.、Mm. Uh, 
why 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 is this such a change of heart all of a sudden what do you think you know is, is happening now why the governments are yes. finally or at least some of them mm-hmm. we know that mod in uh, ministry of defense in england has france right. um mexico and brazil mm. um they're some of the countries that have finally let us see the the documents or at least some of them men, much of it is still blacked out i might add even uh-huh. so but i think it's because so many are seeing these craft and actually talking about it it beca- it's becoming harder and harder to say they don't exist mm. so they they're really being forced i believe not only by people who are uh, taking you know people have got ca- videos on their cameras now um you know sorry should i say they've got you know with their 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 phones they've got video or got cameras on right. their phones you know people have got video cameras they've got you know digital cameras and nobody minds about taking them because they're small and handy now so there's more chance of taking this footage i have seen some incredible footage from just average people you know that have been walking along the street at night and suddenly seeing seeing this craft and 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 taking you know sh- you know a certain amount of minutes of this particular footage and there's some incredible footage out there now i saw some only recently which was over the fields in wiltshire where they were you know these these um four egg shaped craft that mm-hmm. w- were just um you know they were just seeing them out the window this kind of footage is all around the world it's becoming much harder to hide it and i think also there is pressure from these intelligences to finally get um some kind of disclosure on this planet and i think they are also for- forcing the issue but why why would the government want to hide these sort of things you know what do you think are the reason Well it's a very complex one but mm-hmm. um to give you uh, to try and give you an overview in a, in a few sentences when such things like the crash at Roswell who you know we you know many many people know that was a reality that there was actually a crash at Roswell in fact from exopolitics in when I went to Hawaii a few years ago I was told there's been at least 76 recovered um of these spacecraft around the world there's been crashes in South Africa right through to Russia um um South America for example what happened was when they had these um when they recovered these crashes many of the the um technology was reverse engineered um they saw that this technology was going to be very useful for lots of reasons including military reasons mm-hmm. if you think that suddenly you've got technology way beyond what's known on this planet it makes it uh, a lot of sense to keep it quiet to, to yourself I, that's mm-hmm. right and the um that was one of the things that um Eisenhower actually talked about because he was supposed to meet with these intelligences and what he was saying was he was warning against the military corporate elite having this technology because if they got hold of it and and eventually keeping a lot of the government um this secret from a lot of the government as well the you know in power at that time they're able to reverse engineer this technology but to give you an example if you had technology that w- could provide every person on this planet mm. with free energy for the rest of their lives costing them nothing what do you think would happen to our society mm. in terms of what we what 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 do we what does the economy run on um you know fossil fuels what if you didn't need any of that and for 60 years in fact may not have ever needed that would you actually want people to have that if you were in fact using you know um part of the corporations that use that own the planet through fossil fuels of course you wouldn't so disclosures happened a lot more because it you know they could these the people that have the power that have this this kind of um technology know that if we had we had free energy and stuff stuff like that it would change the whole balance of power on this planet so it's more for economic social and political reasons that it's been kept quiet and far less than is it going to is it going to shake person a person's paradigm 76% of people were asked do they believe in intelligent life or the possibility we're not alone and um, that was another survey done mm-hmm. 76% believed that we were not alone then i don't think you know the general public will have a problem with that once it's known and been admitted to the problem is still that we're told it's not real and that you're crazy Now, among the a thousand five hundred people you actually study and work with, mm-hmm. uh, what what were the transformation you know of these people with this kind of experience? 
What happens is that the experience itself forces people to embrace a larger paradigm, a multidimensional reality. They become far more psychic and aware. And when I say psychic, it means that they can tune in to this greater multidimensional reality. It means they can see energy fields. They are often become more um, empathic. They can actually tune into feelings and emotions with people. Many of them, when they're very young, can even communicate telepathically. And some of the clients that I've had have talked that when they were children, that they used to communicate uh, telepathically with their siblings. And, and there was an interesting one where a gentleman told me that he, he used to communicate telepathically with his sister until one day she, she told him to stop being lazy and start talking. Mm. What it seems to happen is by through this experience that it, it catapults them into this um, awareness of a greater reality, which changes the way they see the world. And when they go up on the spacecraft, they're taught about um, that we can't destroy this planet. They're told that they we must take care of it because it's a living, breathing organism. And that, that we have a responsibility not only to look after it for ourselves, that everything that we do to this planet actually affects the, our galactic neighbors, all these other intelligences that come from the cosmos. And so they're saying that, you know, even with our nuclear power, I mean, we see this, you know, as something, as a, as a weapon. But what they're saying is that what we're doing is we're damaging not just um, our Earth and our planet, but we are affecting them also, even in terms of dimensions. So what happens is that it, it gets um, the individual to wake up to realizing that what the world that they've grown up in, which is so narrow and limited in terms of how, um, uh, you know, we, we experience reality, let's face it, what, unless you can touch, feel, and, and see it, it's not real. What they're realizing is there's an unseen world of um, absolutely amazing potential and that we can access that and some people can actually see it. Some people can see spirits. For example, some people can see angels, fairies, um, you know, um, a lot of these other um, non, non-physical, um, what we call non-physical energies or intelligences. But we say it's not real because some of us have got such a limited physical vision. But, you know, look at a dog. A dog can hear things that we can't hear. You know, and just because we can't hear them, does it mean the dog can't hear them? No, not at all. The dog just has the capacity to hear them. But what happens after they've been on the craft and through what I believe is certain genetic engineering that's done on the craft, they're producing individuals through interaction with them that have abilities to see far more beyond the physical universe. And from that, they change the way they see the world, the way they see the universe, because many of them even communicate with animals and even have a sense of understanding, you know, the, the plant world, for example. Well, if you could understand how plants feel or animals feel, you would be the way you interact with them would be totally different. And this is how it changes them. They become cosmically minded instead of just earthbound. And that's the difference. Now, I, uh, f- uh, from from your uh, lecture uh, uh, yesterday, you know, you 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 you, you sort of uh, uh, conveyed uh, the, the the idea that many of these people were ch- they were children, mm-hmm. right? So they were puzzled puzzle at their experience, and they they couldn't verbalize it or mm-hmm. explain it, um, and. And some of them are just young adults or, or, mm. or, or teenagers mm. and who seem to possess certain kind of knowledge that cannot be explained, you know, from mm. their, from their experience. Uh, now, I mean, people who, who have this kind of influence, uh, I would think, that would they, do they tend to, uh, feel empowered to come out? Uh, openly and talk about it or, or do they, why would they still, many of them will still shine from, ex, you know, uh, telling people about their experience? I mean, do they do they somehow in a, uh, send a common message among the people you 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 know you have interviewed? Well, the first que- part of that question yeah. is about why they wouldn't come out right. and share this with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, Tracy Taylor is one of the young ladies that I I show does absolutely amazing geometric um, colored and and uh, drawings that she feels come through her from these intelligences. Um, also comes out with strange languages and strange scripts. What she told me was that when she used to go up on the spaceship when she was five years old, she thought everybody else did. Oh. So she didn't understand that when she went to school and talked about it, people would laugh at her and say, what are you talking about? So she soon learned that other people weren't talking about this. Therefore, it's best not to talk about it because otherwise you're not going to have any friends. 
Mm. And so gradually, she said, she dumbed herself down and that when she was 15, she noticed she had healing abilities, that she could use energy from her hands. Again, she she didn't know who to tell because she, did, she was afraid that people would just think she was crazy. There are so many that come to me and say that they had these abilities when they were children but wouldn't talk about it in the end because they got laughed at. A young man only recently came to me in his 30s and said that when he was four years old, he was able to levitate his cars up into the air and play with them. But it wouldn't happen if he had friends around and he couldn't work out why his friends couldn't do it. Now, these are the kinds of things that people tell me and they tell me with absolute sincerity and honestly. They will say, you know, that they could often turn out light bulbs with their mind. They could actually turn um, traffic lights and change them, change the colors. But when they realized other people couldn't do that, and, and if they talked about it, they were laughed at, they shut down. And a lot of the teenagers, I believe, shut down because they want to be the same as everybody else. They don't want to be different. They don't want to say, look, I can see colors around people. They don't want to say, you know, I, I can tune into your thoughts. One 13-year-old told me that she knew what her teacher was thinking. And she said, and what she's telling us and what she's thinking is quite different. And what she's thinking sometimes isn't very nice. Now, if the teacher <laughs> knew that, <laughs> what would happen if the teacher knew that? She wouldn't find it very nice either, would she? So, you know, this is why they don't talk about it, because they realize very quickly that it's not okay. It's like children that say they have imaginary friends. How do yeah. we know they're imaginary? Mm. Only because we can't see them? Does it mean they're not real? And this is what we have to question. The way that we understand our reality is programmed into us by our, by our, our education, by our belief systems. But is that actually what reality is? Or is there a broader band of reality? that we have not really fully honored and accepted as part of our reality because society and education and culture tells us this is what we must see and anything beyond that that doesn't fit isn't real. Electricity, we can't see it, mm -hmm. but we know it's real. How about love? There's another one. Everybody knows love exists, but can you tell me what color it is? Can you tell me what it looks like? But you know what it feels and you know when you get it and you know when you don't get it, mm -hmm. but it's unseen, but it's real. And this is what I'm talking about. So this is why they don't talk about it. And this is why we get so many people that shut down. But, but there are bound to be people who like to boast about this, you know, extraordinary uh, ability. I mean, w wouldn't you think, you know, people who, who, who can really read people's mind and they will actually show off of it? Would, I mean... Well, what, maybe some, yes. you would get some people that maybe mm. would like to show that they're, they're mm. different. But... The bottom line is for most people, because mm -hmm. it, it's programmed into our society to conform, it's programmed mm -hmm. in our society to be acceptable, it's really hard for children to be different. Mm. You know, um, immediately you're different, you're bullied, nobody wants to know you. So no matter how amazing this is, they just don't want to be different. They want to be the same. And, and some will actually shut down their abilities by going into drugs or alcohol ah. because it makes it too hard to be in a world where you know that person that's talking to you isn't telling the truth. And you know they're not. You know they're lying to you because mm -hmm. you have a sense that they're not being truthful. But you can't say to them, look, I know you're lying because I sense it mm -hmm. or I know what you're thinking about. Because what do you think they're going to say to you? They're not going to want to know you even more if they think that you can tune into their thoughts. So many learn that it's not okay to be different. But when a child says to his mother, and this is, this is some of the, the profound things these children say before they realize that they're different. Um, one of these things, Mike Oram, a, a gentleman in England, he's now my age, said to his mother when he was four, mm. there's going to be a shift of consciousness on this planet, not in your lifetime, but mine. He was four years old when he said this to his mother. His mother didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But you don't come out with that kind of profound thing at four years old. But these children do. And it's because they're having another education and it's not terrestrial. It's extraterrestrial. And many of them talk about going on the craft and learning things on the craft where they're using their mind and they're super conscious. And they have, some have recall, some don't have recall. But they may actually be able to even draw the craft that they've gone on. But it seems like they gradually let go of that as they get older and realize it's not okay. Just like children who have memories of past lives eventually start to forget because they want to forget and they want to be, they want to be the same, not different. 
even though you might think, gosh, it would be wonderful to be right. different. <laughs> but as a child, no, mm. it isn't. Because if you're different, you're picked on. You have no friends. And people here in this room know that as soon as you're different to society, then people avoid okay. you. Mm -hmm. You don't talk about this because it's not okay. Even when you're an adult, this happens. And there are people in this room know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, even though uh, yesterday, you know, we managed to have uh, your talk uh, uh, being, you know, uh, at, at the university, Hong Kong University, but uh, in, in reality, you know, we actually have um, more lectures to be, you know, to be uh, mm -hmm. held at the university campus. But then uh, we were kind of, you know, uh, deny. So ex with exception of your of your lecture, because you came all the way from Australia. Now, so apparently, um, there are still lots of people, you know, even among mm -hmm. the you know our university mm -hmm. uh, scholars or, or, or students, you know, they they saw, they still try to resist this. And then we had you know, you know, we, we remember in la last mm -hmm. uh, yesterday there was a student who raised the question, you know, mm -hmm. he, and she just tried to um, uh, ask you to make all these definitions, which mm -hmm. he can obviously you know look it up in the in mm -hmm. the in the in the dictionary if that's mm -hmm. what he was really after. So uh, what what are we faced with? You know, there there's obviously a resistance from from institutions you know of higher learning. And this is, this is the sad thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That we have an amazing enigma here, an amazing mystery, a phenomena that millions of people around the world are experiencing. And yet we can't get the academic institutions to start to take mm -hmm. it seriously. And my, uh, my biggest, um, concern as a therapist and a mm -hmm. counselor is that I have people coming to me that have, and some of them, and I've written about it in my book, Awakening. There was one young girl, that rang me at 19. At 14 years old, she went to her doctor and said she was seeing aliens and spaceships. And he said, there's no such thing. It diagnosed her as schizophrenic. And she was put on a cocktail of medications. So severe were these, these drugs that she ended up being quite suicidal. Mm. And it was only until many years later when she was looking at talk programs and people talking about these experiences did she finally realize that maybe her experiences were real. And then she finally contacted me. I have met people that have been put into psychiatric wards because um, they've been, they've actually said to their doctors, I've seen aliens or I've, uh, you know, I've seen spaceships or whatever. They have been seen as hallucinating, schizophrenic, for example, and put on medication. Now, this is why I'm concerned mm -hmm. because here are people that are, are normal, credible, articulate, intelligent people, plainly quite normal, but are saying, this is my experience. How can you medicate and see that as abnormal if they are functioning quite normally in this world but are just saying their experience is out of the box? You know, we've got to look at the way we understand our reality and realize already in string theory that we've got 11 dimensions, so they're telling us, that now we've got quant um, you know, quantum theory that's saying that we could, of course, have a multidimensional universe that DNA actually acts through miniature wormholes and mm -hmm. has hypercommunication. They're calling wave genetics. It's communicating over distances. That this is now being seen by science, and yet they can't accept that in a galaxy uh, uh, and galaxies of trillions and trillions of, of stars that we can be the only intelligent life. How ludicrous is that? How absolutely ludicrous. These are intelligent academics. How can, how can you not wonder what's mm. going on here? And, and yes, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, if we can't believe people's testimony, I mean, in a court of law, people's testimony is what we go on to mm. decide whether a crime or a crime hasn't been committed. Mm. And yet, why can't we believe the testimony of millions of people all around the world, of all ages, of all sexes, all belief systems that are saying, this is my experience. I'm seeing non-human intelligent beings. And they're coming to me at night. They're leaving marks on my body. You know, that I have missing time. I can't explain. And, and when you, you regress them, you find they've been on spaceships. What is the problem about saying this is real? I don't understand. Now, uh, re re recently, you know, there's been talk about um, um, the year uh, 2012, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, something is, uh, is going to happen. And then uh, with this increasing activities of uh, UFO uh, making their, their, their presence felt, 
Uh, is there any, any connection, you know, to this uh, year to uh, 2012? Uh, is there any you know, direction that you see mm. from your many interviews with, uh, with people who have this sort of experience? What I'm hearing from those mm. who have this experience, whether mm. you call them contactees, experienced star children or whatever, mm -hmm. many of them feel there's going to be a shift, mm. that there's going to be a change, whether it's a change in consciousness or whether it's going to be more than that. Some have had precognitive dreams where they're shown cataclysms, um, but we don't necessarily know whether that's going to be the reality. Some feel it's more like it's going to be a shift in awareness, that we as a species are now evolving. And a lot of the children talk about this evolution of the species, calling it different names. And there's names given like indigo children, rainbow children, crystal, crystal children. There's a young um, boy in, America, uh, in Russia called Bariska that at seven years old talked about his life on Mars, um, when, um, a past life on Mars. But he also talked about this planet and there's going to be a shift. And he talked about the indigo children and he said they're going to help this planet. So there seems to be a lot of the young, those um, that are having some of these experiences that are aware there's going to be a shift on this planet. And I believe that whether or not it's 2012 or that we're actually even in that shift now, mm -hmm. there is no doubt that these intelligences are saying that we are evolving and they're assisting us to evolve. And that what's happening on the craft is that people are being educated in the real origin of the species, in what reality consists of, in terms of time, time and space, quantum physics. All of these are, are part of the ET syllabus for this planet, but also showing how that we can work with our mind and actually assisting us to work with nonverbal communication, whether it's energetic or whether in fact it's going to be ultimately that we'll become um, a new kind of cosmic being that can communicate telepathically, like a lot of the experiences do actually on the craft. They say they go into a super conscious state and everything with these beings is mind to mind, mm -hmm. like a mind meld. And it's feelings and emotions as well as information. It's not the way that we, we, we communicate in such a limited way on this planet. So I think there is going to be a shift. And I think we're part of what can be maybe uh, in terms of um, a collective. We, we, you know, we only need 10% of the planet to wake up before the rest of the planet wakes up. And I believe the star kids are part of that. And it could happen in 2012. It, it could be already be happening, as mm -hmm. far as I know. Now, um, on, on the one hand, you know, we can understand why people who did have this kind of experience were kind of uh, afraid to talk about it. But there are people who are very curious. You know, they mm -hmm. actually want to be able to 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 make contact. Mm -hmm. You know, including myself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I read about the work of Doctor Steve, uh, Stephen Greer. Mm -hmm. You know, and that uh, he actually organized mm -hmm. uh, groups. Yes. To, to, to train people to through meditation and invite, mm. you know, the UFO or, or ET to, to kind of uh, make their appearance. Uh, now, I mean, I know Neil, uh, have also had this sort of, uh, ideas in mind so that people, in, in case people in Hong Kong really desire this sort of experience, we don't have to go to the United States and join Dr. Mm. Stephen Greer's uh, group. Uh, so if people are interested, uh, what, where, where, where do we go from, from here? I think if people are interested, we, we have to do this on a very responsible and gradual basis. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I'm suggesting going forward with this is to get together, in the first instance, a group that I intuitively feel would be the right group of people mm -hmm. to, to be able to liaise together, to join together, have the right state of mind so that we can start off with a small number because mm -hmm. normally, if people aren't experienced, the bigger the number, the more chaotic mm. the group can be. So I'm, I'm starting to already, um, in my weekly newsletter, which I give out free on my website, if anybody subscribes, I already log all the sightings that we have. Uh -huh. And I shall be issuing in my newsletter um, on, on www.exapoliticshongkong.hk, I shall be updating the people, especially in our group, uh, on when we're going to do it. What I plan to do is to take a boat mm. out on the other side of Lama where it's quiet, and we hope to check with the weather forecast to make sure we've got a minimum of partly cloudy skies. 
obviously uh, uh, mm-hmm. clear skies are the best mm-hmm. and we will we will come to follow certain protocols so that mm. we can actually start off responsibly by looking by feeling by entering an altered state and i'm very very sure we'll at least in the first instance as some of our, my colleagues have have had dreams come in while they're in this altered state so i'm really looking forward to that and then the next step may be a materialization now um so uh, if this is going to 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 happen and uh, uh, people can contact you or visit your 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 website exopolitics.com.hk yes. and then uh, maybe inquire further they can uh, inquire uh, further and what we will do at the UFO club we will actually vet vet the people and mm. check that we have you know the right uh, we, what we don't want to do is have people who are going to be afraid we're not here to scare people mm-hmm. and and the ETs are very spiritual so if somebody is slightly afraid they may not come in close or they may not even come at all mm. whereas if everybody is open minded and accepting then we have a much greater chance of this happening and i must tell you this is what i told you last time right. this is galactic diplomacy this is a typical example of where the ets are bypassing the governments and it's our responsibility to meet them halfway mm. well uh <laughs> Time, time is running short, you know, and uh, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Mary Rockwell coming all the way from Australia and uh, uh, Neil and Teresa for sharing her personal experience. I guess you are in a comfortable group, you know, so you feel comfortable to talk about it. <laughs> you haven't had a chance to tell everyone or your friends about this, this experience of yours, which is a wonderful experience. Anyway, uh, we will explore this fur- uh, further. You know, it turned out that, that this topic is a very popular topic among our listeners. So this is, you know, new, mm-hmm. you know, you will help us in this area sure. and enlighten us further. Thank you very much, Mary. You're most uh, welcome. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you.